Dear students, Assalamu alaikum. Welcome you to online class of Government Haji Muhammad Mohsin College. I am Muhammad Muntasir Moshet, lecturer in English. I am a 31st PCS education officer and uh, I welcome you to, uh, to, uh, to today's session. Okay. Before starting our class, I would like to thank uh, our Honorable Prime Minister uh, Said Hasina uh, for uh, making digital, digital advancement uh, for converting the Bangladesh into a digital Bangladesh. For uh, that thing, we are uh, actually uh, able to take this class. Uh, in this pandemic you are absent we are missing you uh, and we are missing the classrooms but for the digital advancement we are connected to you with uh, in digitally and that is a great thing and uh, i would like to thank professor anjan kumar nondi uh, our honorable principal sir for arranging this uh, online classes in the last class, I uh, we read about folk music, and today we'll read about verb. Um, verb is one of the parts of his speech of uh, English grammar, and uh, you know that there are eight parts of his speech, and among them, verb is the most important one. Why? As verb is called the soul of a sentence if there is no verb in a sentence we cannot consider that uh, combination of words a sentence so verb is the main thing for uh, a sentence verb actually expresses the meaning of the sentence to be a simple sentence you know that there are three types of sentence according to structure and um, first one is simple sentence second one is complex sentence third one is compound sentence for becoming a simple sentence uh, you need at least one verb and that should be a finite verb verb in a broad sense uh, expresses as the meaning of the sentence what uh, is the subject doing in the sentence is uh, described by verb. So, uh, verb tells us about the action of the sentence. Action. subject and it holds the meaning so Babar tells us about the action of the subject what the subject is doing in the sentence is mentioned by the verb and it holds verb holds the meaning of the sentence the sentence becomes meaningful because of the verb so verb is the most important component of a sentence say if we write we eat rice If we omit this eat, we and rice, though they have meaning, we amra, rice, money, uh, bhat. Tale amra, bhat, kuna ortho prakash, kutte pachana. When we will bring it here, then the sentence will get its meaning. And uh, without meaning, without complete meaning, there cannot be a sentence. Okay. So, uh, in this sentence, who is the subject, it is the verb and rice is object. So, uh, subject does the work on the object. 
So from this sentence, by uh, through this word "eat," we are uh, we came to know that what the subject we is doing here. That's why verb is the most important thing. Verb. Uh, now we will read about the classifications of kinds of verb and classifications of verb. Verb is divided uh, according to its use. According to the purpose, verb is divided uh, in various cluster or various group. In the, uh, so in the first group, we will get uh, two patterns of verb. Uh, one is principal verb. Second one is auxiliary verb. Principal verb and auxiliary verb. In a sentence, uh, you, uh, you may get one verb or more than one verb. And uh, in, uh, when you will get more than one verb, once verb does the main function and one verb expresses the main thing that is principal verb and uh, in some sentences uh, when we will get two verbs one verb will have the uh, principal verb to express its meaning to complete the meaning that is uh, auxiliary verb principal verb is the uh, main performer and auxiliary verb is the helper so is the uh, main role player principal verb is main uh, role player and auxiliary verb is a helper okay so again i am saying that principal verb is main role player and auxiliary verb is a helper now right uh, i am writing a sentence i am eating rice i eat rice in these two sentence, in this uh, in the second sentence, there is only one verb, and in the first sentence, there are two verbs: I am and eating. Okay, and from the word eat, we are getting the meaning. What is happening here? I eat rice. That means you can cover cut, chulse. And in the first sentence, we are also getting the main theme from the word eating that means uh, what action is happening here is uh, described by the word the eating and eat so these are the main verb of the sentence which is expressing the main action which is describing the main action but uh, so uh, this is the main verb and here eating is the main verb Okay, so what is this verb doing here? M is a verb. Uh, what is the function of M here? The function of M is here uh, that it is helping the main verb. How can we say that uh, M is helping? If we uh, remove M from this sentence, then I eating rice will be uh, meaningless. Okay, it uh, will lose its meaning. Okay, and uh, then uh, when I will add M here, then uh, eating will be able to uh, complete its meaning. Okay, that's why uh, M is helping this main verb to complete its meaning. That is why M is called auxiliary verb. Okay. 
and M is also helping ET or this sentence to uh, indicate its tense. When we'll get M here, uh, uh, we'll, uh, we'll have the meaning, uh, uh, we'll get it, we'll say that it is present continuous tense. When M is here, we'll say that it is present continuous tense. When I will add was, then it turns into past continuous tense. So, auxiliary verb am and was is auxiliary verb, uh, are auxiliary verb, and they are expressing the tense of the sentence. They are helping the main verb to express its tense. Clear, students? Okay. So, uh, we came to know about uh, auxiliary verb and main verb. Our principal verb. So, if I write, mm, he is a doctor. Chef John Doctor. Then, what uh, there is only one verb is. So, uh, generally, we say that am, is, are, was, were, these are auxiliary verb. So, is this is, is auxiliary verb here? No, it is not auxiliary verb. Because to be auxiliary verb, you need to help a main verb. There is no other verb. Only this is the single verb of the sentence. That's why in this sentence, is is the main verb. It is not auxiliary verb. But when we will write, he is helping the poor. Then uh, another verb came and it is the main verb and it is auxiliary verb. But when uh, am is a will be used uh, lonely, we uh, will not say that am is a is auxiliary verb. To be auxiliary verb, you need a main verb. So here is this auxiliary verb, a v, and uh, this is the main verb. And is is in this sentence is is the main verb. Clear? Okay. Now we'll uh, read about the. Uh, we'll see uh, the different kinds of auxiliary verbs. To be verb. M is R was where etc. To do work, do does did to have work. Have, has, had. These are the auxiliary verbs, and there is another kind of uh, another kind of auxiliary verb that is modal auxiliary. Shall, will. May, might, etc. So, to be verb, to do verb, to have verb, model auxiliary verb. These are called primary auxiliary and this is model auxiliary. Primary auxiliary verbs um, are those verbs that uh, helps uh, the um, that can be used as main verb, but model auxiliary cannot be used as uh, main verb. Um, and am is a uh, they am is a placed in the present tense, was a uh, placed in the past tense. Do does is for present tense, 
and did it for the past tense had has for the present tense and had is for the past tense so uh, we can get the present form and past form of these verbs but uh, you will not get uh, present form and past form this sort of conjugation uh, for the model auxiliaries though we say that uh, the past form of shall is should the past form of will is uh, would these are uh, common uh, terms okay and now we'll you, uh, see the use of this sort of auxiliary verbs they are playing in the field they are playing in the field so here playing is the main verb r is the auxiliary verb if we convert it into past tense then r will turn into where okay they are playing in the field and uh, we have seen that uh, i am muntasir here m is the main verb so uh, m can be used as auxiliary verb and can be used as a main verb now the use of do does did i do not play football here do is uh, the auxiliary verb and play is the main verb but do can be used as main verb as well here so do is the auxiliary verb uh, play, uh, play is the main verb do can be used as uh, i do the sum here do is the main verb okay so uh, this uh, do verb can be used as main verb and auxiliary but now i will uh, see the use of have verb i have played football i have played football here played is the main verb it holds the meaning have is the auxiliary verb but when i will write i have a car there have is the main verb okay so have can also be used as main verb and auxiliary verb this is the uh, thing i mentioned earlier and now i will you see the use of some model auxiliary verb model auxiliary verb have some specific use uh, say uh, should is uh, should is used in a sense uh, but must is used in another sense can is used can have another sense can para orthe babita hoy should uchit orthe babita hoy me shombhavana orthe babita hoy so model auxiliary uh, uh, do the uh, function model auxiliary functions in a specific uh, model auxiliaries have a specific functions we can say that okay but that's it that need this to get you kept out the other way to hide the home I mean Jody Bolli Jay Amari Kasta Kora Uchi Tahonami Ligbo I should do it about I'm Jody Bolli Jay Amari Ta Obusha Kora Uchi Tahonami Bolsi the key I must do it i can use in this sense i have to do it it i want to master the have to do it tale should hoche ekhan auxiliary verb do hoche main verb come on to ekhano eki dekho must hoche the main verb ar do hoche auxiliary verb 
have two hoche main verb two hoche auxiliary suppose ami golmal kore felechi should hoche auxiliary verb do hoche main verb must hoche auxiliary verb do hoche main verb have to hoche auxiliary verb do hoche main verb sorry for my mistake okay so these are the use of auxiliary verb again uh, you will get uh, auxiliary verbs in active voice in a pattern and in passive voice in another pattern uh, and in auxiliary verb in a passive voice every auxiliary verb will be followed by uh, past participle form okay and but in the active voice uh, it may be auxiliary verbs may be followed by verb plus ing or may be followed by verb, uh, verb past participle form okay so let uh, let me check that uh, say i am writing a letter I am writing a letter it is active voice why it is active voice because the subject is working here Sub subject is active who is doing the work who is writing the I is subject is writing but here a letter is written by me okay here this subject is not active the subject is not doing the work of writing okay object is doing the work of writing so it is passive voice but in the active voice we are getting the structure uh, of verb uh, that after am we are getting verb plus i and g but in the passive voice uh, i'm getting after am uh, is the verb's past participle form Verb pp. Okay, Say, uh, same thing is applicable in, for others uh, other uh, verbs. Okay, now we'll discuss about another two groups of another groups of verb. Um, say finite and non finite. Finite verb and non finite verb it is another genre of verbs kinds and uh, finite verb completes the work the work the work uh, but non finite verb can't finish the work work without the help of finite verb without the help of finite verb So finite verb uh, finishes the work, completes the work fully, completely, but non-finite verb cannot finish the work completely. In Bangla, finite verb is called Shomapika Kriya, in uh, and non-finite verb is called uh, Ashomapika Kriya. Now we will go for the example. I like to eat uh, pizza i like to eat pizza in this sentence uh, there are two verbs one is like and another is eat to eat and which one is finite 
and which one is not unit. Uh, you have to remember one thing in a simple sentence. It is a simple sentence, isn't it? One subject and two words, but in a simple sentence, uh, there can be on, uh, only one finite verb. You cannot place two finite verb in a simple sentence. After uh, so, what to do after uh, uh, input uh, giving uh, after writing one fin finite verb, you have to uh, use other verbs in non finite structures. Okay, but in complex sentence, there are uh, if there are two parts of that sentence, every part will have one uh, a finite verb. Okay, if there uh, it is more than two parts, then there will be more than two finite verbs. Okay, but in a simple sentence, there will be one finite verb. In this sentence, which one is the finite verb? Let us say, if we are talking pizza, we are eating pizza. We are eating pizza. We to eat from the sentence, okay. If I say that I like pizza, we get the sentence I like pizza. That means this is the finite verb. But if we remove like, then I to pizza. That means I mean pizza kete. Or it cannot complete its meaning. I, I to eat pizza cannot complete its meaning. That means this to eat is non-finite verb. Okay, so uh, when I will place a finite verb, then the sentence will have its meaning. Okay, so I like to eat pizza here, like is the finite verb and to it is the non-finite verb. Now I will discuss uh, about the classifications of non-finite verbs or kinds of non-finite verbs. First one is infinitive. Infinitive is that to plus verb where base form two plus verb where base form base form jokhon amra kono sentence e two plus verb er base form pabo ba present form pabo ba verb one pabo tokhon amra seta ke infinitive bolbo tale two plus verb er base form ke infinitive bole kintu khyal rakhte hobe two plus verb er present form eta tokhon Function ta tick bar bar motto kulbe na. She jano jeto ita mool otta pakash kutta parna. She ta tick bar bar ne catch korona. Tal kisen ne catch korbe infinity. Ita noun ne motto catch korbe. To catch korbe. Noun ne motto. Ekon noun ne motto catch kutte el ki. Ita the ghato na ki. Noun ne motto catch kutte ke leita subject ishe be catch korbe. Noun ne motto catch kutte ke leita object ishe be catch korbe. Noun ne motto catch kutte ke leita complement ishe be catch korbe. Ebe kabe nana tharon ne prokriye egiye jabe. To amra ek tu dekhi subject ishe be ki kabe infinitive catch korbe. To swim is good for health. To swim is good for health. So, a jagai to swim ta, 2 plus 2 plus verb present form. A jagai eta subjected moto catch coche. The subjected moto dale e bucket subject ki bucket subject to chede 2 plus verb present form. A on should to subject issue catch coche. Kesh money amid the jigishkuri bakotike. Kesh has the jun no babo. Tokon answer as we jay shatar kata. Tale, it is a subject. 
কারণ আমি কে দ্বারা প্রশ্ন করে হু বা হোয়াট দ্বারা প্রশ্ন করে ভারতকে প্রশ্ন করে যখন অ্যান্সারগুলো পাচ্ছি তখনই সেটা সাবজেক্ট হিসেবে কনসিডার হয় কেমন তাহলে আমি দেখলাম যে কারণ সাবজেক্ট পজিশনে নাউন বা প্রনাউন বসে কেমন তাহলে এই টু সুইমটা এখন সাবজেক্ট হিসেবে বসছে এটা তাহলে নাউনের মতো কাজ করছে তাহলে আমরা এটা সঙ্গে আমি যদি আরেকবার অন্য করতে চাই টু প্লাস ভার্বের বেস ফর যখন নাউনের মতো কাজ করবে তখন তাকে কি বলবো ইনফিনিটিভ বলবো ইনফিনিটিভ নিয়ে আমরা পরবর্তী ক্লাসগুলোতে আরও বিস্তারিত পড়াশোনা করব এখন আসি আমরা জিরান্টকে দেখি জিরান্ট হলো আরেকটা নন ফিনিট ভার্ব যেটা ভার্ব প্লাস আইন জি এর স্ট্রাকচার নেই অর্থাৎ রাইটিং হেল্প সুইমিং প্লেইং এই ধরনের স্ট্রাকচার অর্থাৎ ভার্বের প্রেজেন্ট ফর্মের সাথে আইন জি যুক্ত হয় এবং এটাও কিসের মতো কাজ করে নাউনের মতো কাজ করে নাউনের মতো নাউনের মতো কাজ করে তাহলে আমি নাউনের মতো কাজ করা যে সাবজেক্ট হিসেবে কাজ করা অবজেক্ট হিসেবে কাজ করা বলেছিলাম তাহলে সেই বিষয়টা এখানে আবার দেখিয়ে দিই যদি আমরা যদি দেখি আই লাভ সুইমিং তাহলে আই লাভ সুইমিং যখন বলছি আমার হাতে লেখা একটু বাজে তো তোমাদের বুঝতে অসুবিধা হতে পারে সেই জন্য আমি আন্তরিক ভাবে দুঃখিত আই লাভ সুইমিং তাহলে এখানে সাবজেক্ট কে আই তাহলে অবজেক্টটা কে মানে আই কাকে ভালোবাসে তাহলে কাকে দিয়ে প্রশ্ন করে উত্তর পাচ্ছি বা কি ভালোবাসে কি দিয়ে প্রশ্ন করে উত্তর পাচ্ছি তখন এটাই হচ্ছে যে অবজেক্ট তাহলে অবজেক্ট পজিশনে নাউন বা প্রনাউন বসে সেই জন্য এখন ভার প্লাস আইন জিও কি এই নাউন অবজেক্ট পজিশন বসেছে তাহলে এটা নাউনের মতো কাজ করছে তাহলে ভার প্লাস আইন জি যখন নাউনের মতো কাজ করবে তখন তাকে কি বলবো আমরা জিরান্ট তখন আমরা তাকে কি বলবো জিরান্ট এরপর আজকের পাঠের শেষ যে টপিকটা আমরা পড়বো সেটা হলো পার্টিসিপল পার্টিসিপল না জিরান্ড এবং ইনফিনিট থেকে একটু ভিন্ন বিষয় পার্টিসিপল কি জিরান্ড এবং ইনফিনিটি থেকে একটু ডিফারেন্ট জিরান্ড আর ইনফিনিটি নাউনের মতো কাজ করে কিন্তু পার্টিসিপল কাজ করে অ্যাজেকটিভের মতো অ্যাজেকটিভের কাজটা কি অ্যাজেকটিভ হচ্ছে যে কোনো নাউনের দোষ গুণ অবস্থা ইত্যাদি বোঝায় অর্থাৎ কোনো নাউনকে সে বিশেষায়িত করে তাহলে পার্টিসিপল এখন তিন ধরনের পাই আমি জাস্ট খালি প্রেজেন্ট পার্টিসিপল পাস পার্টিসিপল পারফেক্ট পার্টিসিপল আমরা আজকে খালি এখন প্রেজেন্ট পার্টিসিপল বা তাকে দেখি প্রেজেন্ট পার্টিসিপল হচ্ছে ভার্বের সাথে যখন আইনজি যুক্ত হবে এবং সেটি অ্যাজেকটিভের মতো কাজ করবে তখন আমরা তাকে প্রেজেন্ট পার্টিসিপল বলবো যেমন ডোন্ট ডিস্টার্ব এ স্লিপিং বয় বা এ স্লিপিং বেবি পৃথিবীর সবচেয়ে সুন্দর দৃশ্যগুলো হচ্ছে যে শিশুরা যখন ঘুমায় আর আমাদের তখন ইচ্ছা করে তাদেরকে আদর করতে তো এই ধরনের ক্ষেত্রে বোঝাই ঘুম শিশু বাবুদের ঘুম ভাঙায় না এই ধরনের যখন কথা বলছি এখন এখানে ভার প্লাস আইন জিটা নাউনের মতো কাজ করছে না এটা কার মতো কাজ করছে অ্যাজেকটিভের মতো কিভাবে এই বেবিটা কেমন বেবিটা কি ধরনের কোন অবস্থায় আছে বেবিটা ঘুমন্ত অবস্থায় আছে তাহলে বেবিটা কোন অবস্থায় আছে ঘুমন্ত অবস্থায় আছে তাহলে বেবিটার অবস্থা বুঝাচ্ছে তাহলে এটা একটা অ্যাজেকটিভ আবার দেখো নাউন বেস নাউন আর্টিকেল তাহলে এটা আর্টিকেল তাহলে আর্টিকেল আর নাউনের মাঝখানে অ্যাজেকটিভ বসে তাহলে আজকে আমরা ভাবে দুই ধরনের গ্রুপ দেখেছি একটা দেখলাম কি প্রিন্সিপাল ভাব আর অক্সিলারি ভাব আর একটা দেখলাম কি ফিনিট ভার্ব এবং নন ফিনিট ভার্ব নন ফিনিট ভার্বটা ফার্স্ট পেপারের জন্য খুবই গুরুত্বপূর্ণ যখনই তোমরা এবং নন ফিনিট ভার্বের স্ট্রাকচার তৈরি করতে পারার ক্ষমতা একজন ছাত্রের থাকতে হবে কারণ যদি আমরা যখন ফ্লো চার্ট করতে যাব 
পরীক্ষায় তখন আমাকে কিন্তু নন ফ্রেমিক স্ট্রাকচার বেশি বেশি ব্যবহার করতে হবে অর্থাৎ ভার প্লাস আইএনজি টু প্লাস ভার প্লাস প্রেজেন্ট ফর্ম এগুলো আমাকে ব্যবহার করতে হবে এখন আমি যদি এটা সম্পর্কে ধারণা নাই থাকে তখন আমি কিভাবে সেই কথাগুলো লিখব তো ধন্যবাদ তোমরা ভালো থাকবে অ্যান্ড ইউ মাস্ট ইউজ মাস্ক ওয়েন ইউ গো আউটসাইড অ্যান্ড ইউ শুড ইউজ স্যানিটাইজার because in this pandemic situation we have to be alert and we have to keep in mind that safety is fast thank you thank you all assalamu alaikum